Hello, I'm the awesome tutor, and today we're going to be looking at an overview of all the governors that I think have some importance, at least, in British involvement in Australia, or the birth of British Australia, as stated in this specification. So let's start with Arthur Phillip, the one who started it all. Okay, Arthur Phillip was very important in, in an embryonic sense. Use this analytical language, embryonic. He laid the foundation upon which other government upon which other governors were able to, to build. He set the platform. He allowed the colony to survive. He allowed the colony to subsist. He was key in the birth of British Australia. Okay, let's look at some evidence to support that. Okay, in terms of laying the foundation, well, infrastructure. By 1792, when Philip left back and then went to London, okay, you, everyone had rudimentary wattle and daub dwellings. They were of poor quality, obviously, but everyone had some form of shelter. And there was a brick built governor's mansion. Okay, so clearly we have the beginnings of a settlement. Now in terms of how he dealt with the convicts, because remember, he came to Australia on a, on a ship filled with convicts. I believe there were 775 convicts on that ship when he arrived in Botany Bay on the 18th of January, 1788. And so they, these were convicts, these were prisoners who were sent from London all the way to Australia because the British government did not want to deal with them. They were that bad. So you had, so you had a class of people who had no agricultural or, or economically viable skills. And yet, Governor Philip was able to use them. He was able to look at what he had and use it effectively to create a surviving colony. Okay, or a surviving penal settlement, because that's what it was. It was an area to send the prisoners. Okay, it was basically a prison camp. And later governors were able to transform that into something else. But let's go back to Philip. Okay, now, with the convicts, he used punishment and reward. The carrot and stick approach. If you misbehaved, or did not follow instructions, you could get a hundred lashings. Okay? He was strict, but he was fair. For example, on the 1st of April, 1790, he issued a proclamation allowing for equal rations. The convicts got the same amount of rations as the officers and the military personnel that were there. And therefore, this limited potential for revolt, and this ensured that there was there was there was little death from starvation. This ensured that this ensured the survival of the members within the penal colony. Okay. Now you had another ship arriving with the second fleet, uh, Lady Juliana, which carried most of the female uh, members of the colony, and it arrived in 1790, sometime in June, I believe. I think it was the 3rd of June, and with it came a vital storeship, the Justinian, just two weeks later, and this had vital supplies such as livestock and crops. This also helped with the survival of the colony, and Philip, he was very smart, you see, he sent the Atlantic, a ship that was part of the Third Fleet, all the way to Calcutta, in India, to get some rice in order to survive, because clearly there were food shortages. They, the, the amount of livestock they had depleted within six months of arrival, so they really needed the second fleet, and Philip's decision to send the Atlantic to Calcutta for rice was vital in the survival of the colony. Now, what Philip was able to do, you see, was he was able to turn nothing into something. He created 
the beginnings of a penal colony which went from reliance on government store for supplies and imports into being able to subsist from its own produce, from its own agricultural produce. Now another decision that Philip made was instead of settling in at Botany Bay on the 18th of January, was because Botany Bay was an infertile land, he actually settled in Sydney. He, he went to Sydney, but then he also went from Sydney 16 miles to Parramatta, renamed Rose Hill, because the land there was more fertile. So that, so that obviously helped with agricultural production. Now, in terms of land grants, which also helped boost the economy, he gave 66 land grants in total, okay? Giving land to um, either ex-convicts or the white settlers that came, or the, the free white settlers that came with the ship. And so what that did is it allowed a form of private enterprise, okay? There was 1,000 acres of land under public cultivation and 516 acres of land under private cultivation. So clearly, you had a functioning agricultural subsistent economy by 1792. In fact, 53 of these land grants were given to the convicts who um, served their term and were allowed to start a new life. And so what that did is it appeased them, placated them, and turned them from convicts who had no economically viable skills into productive members of this new penal colony. So, considering how long I've talked about Philip, I'm going to stop the video there, because if I'm going to talk about all these other governors in the same video, it's going to be too long. Okay? Now, I'll try and limit... Let me shut, shut. Okay. <clears throat> this has been the awesome tutor. Bye.